Okay. Good afternoon. We'll call to order the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals uh, regular meeting for July 30th, 2014. Um, our next item on the agenda is election of chair and vice chair. Uh, John Rogers, our, our chairman, and, and I, the vice chair, uh, had our terms renewed the last city council meeting, so those will that's the next item we need to address. Uh, I make a motion that we elect John Rogers as our chair and Davis Young as our vice chair, or do we need two separate mo motions? I think we can do that in one. Okay, that's my motion. A second. A second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first. Y'all don't, don't want to jump in then. <laughs> okay. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? <laughs> there are none. <laughs> So we'll continue on. Uh, our next item is consideration uh, of the minutes uh, from our June 25th, 2014 meeting. Uh, those have been supplied. Are there any changes that need to be made to those? Hearing none, those will stand approved, and we will now move on to new business. Uh, our first item is a signed variance request. It's application S14040 by Mr. Brian Biggs for Hometown Family Medical requesting a variance from section 25 and a quarter 24A22 of the signed ordinance which prohibits a sign placed in or over a public utility or drainage easement. And this is for property located at 115 North Thompson Lane. Ms. Kerr, will you present that for us? Thank you, Chairman Young. Uh, the applicant, Brian Biggs, representing Hometown Family Medical, is requesting a variance from section 25 and a quarter 24A22 of the City of Murfreesboro sign ordinance which prohibits a foundation or sign placed in or over any public utility or drainage easements without the consent of the B, without the consent of the BZA and the easement holders. The sign is located at 115 North Thompson Lane, is in with, within a commercial highway zone. The applicant is requesting permission to erect one internally illuminated ground sign with 82 square foot display area and an overall height of 20 foot. The sign will be located within a 40-foot water and sewer easement. An agreement for a sign in a city easement form has been signed by the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department, the city engineer, Murfreesboro Electric Department, and the director of building and codes, and a letter of approval has been submitted from Atmos Energy. The applicant will comply with all other setbacks and regulations as required, and I'm available to answer any questions as well as Matt Taylor with SCC who represents the applicant. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Kerr? Uh, if not, uh, Mr. Taylor, do you have anything you'd like to add? Okay. Uh, at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. If there's anyone present that wishes to speak for or against the application, please come forward and state your name and address. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for a motion. Mr. Chairman, we'll make a motion to approve the sign Family's request. Second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. That application has been approved. Thank you, guys. Uh, next, we'll move on to special use permits and variance requests. Uh, we've got three, applic three applications from the Goodwill Industries coming up. We'll tackle the first one, uh, application Z140441 by Mr. David Bider for Goodwill Industries of Middle Tennessee, making the following request for property located in a commercial highway zone at 710 Memorial Boulevard. Uh, this application has two components. The first is a special use permit in order to operate a temporary mobile recycling center, and the second portion is an eight foot variance from section 31C1 of the City of Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance, which states that no receptacle shall exceed 40 feet in length. Matthew? Thank you, Vice Chairman Young. The um, uh, application is one that we've seen for quite a number of years. This one, as, as are the next two applications, uh, this is for a special use permit for a temporary mobile recycling center. And if you look at the aerial photo on the screen in front of you, uh, just next to the word site, you can see the existing trailer that has been there for a number of years, and it's been approved by the BZA the past seven years for this exact same request. Uh, nothing is changing regarding this request as compared to the previous years. Um, 
and along with the special use permit request, they are requesting an eight-foot variance to the requirement that no receptacle shall exceed 40 feet in length. Uh, the standard trailers that they that Goodwill employs are uh, 48 feet in length. Um, so basically, the application is identical to in years past, and as you know, they are allowed to um, uh, request a year-long extension at a time. Um, if the special use permit element is approved, staff recommends the following conditions. The semi-trailer shall not be located within a driveway aisle. Number two, all parts of the semi-trailer shall comply with the minimum 42-foot front building setback in the CH zone. And number three, the special use permit shall be valid from August 1st, 2014 through July 31st, 2015. If you have any questions, I'll be uh, happy to answer them. Uh, Mr. Bider is in attendance, and um, each of these uh, components of this request will require a separate motion. Thank you, Matthew. Any questions for Matthew at this point? Uh, Mr. Bider, anything you'd like to add to the application? Not at this time. Okay. Thank you. At this time, we'll conduct the public hearing. Uh, is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application? Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor uh, for any further discussion or a motion. Uh, and again, these will be two, uh, two items to deal with with this application. I'll make a motion that we approve the special use permit uh, subject to all staff comments. A second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that portion has been approved. Uh, next, we'll move to the eight-foot variance for the trailer. I make a motion to approve the eight-foot variance with the conditions set by the staff. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion on that portion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That application has been approved. Right, next, we'll move to application Z14042 by Mr. David Bider for Goodwill Industries, uh, making the uh, same request at 1825 Old Fort Parkway. Uh, first, a special use permit in order to operate a temporary mobile recycling center. And the second portion, the eight foot variance uh, for the trailer. Matthew. Thank you, Vice Chairman Young. Um, this is another application that we've seen for a number of years. As you mentioned, the two components to this request are identical to the uh, last application. Uh, this location is at the Lowe's on Old Fort Parkway. And if you look at the aerial photo on the screen, right next to the word site, you can actually see the existing trailer. Um, the BZA has approved this application for the past seven years, and uh, the application is um, identical to in years past. Uh, we have not received any, any complaints about the operation of this location. Um, and if the board grants the special use permit request, staff recommends the same three conditions that were placed on the uh, previous application. Once again, uh, two motions will be required for this particular application. Uh, Mr. Bider is present. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, any questions for Matthew? Hmm. Uh, Mr. Bider, anything you'd like to add for this application? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, this time we'll conduct the public hearing. Uh, anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application come forward? Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or a motion, and we'll tackle the special use permit first. There's no further discussion. I make a motion to approve the special use permit uh, subject to staff conditions. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, if not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. That portion has been approved. Uh, next, we can move to the eight foot variance. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the eight foot variance with the recommend, recommended conditions of the staff. Second. I have a motion and a second for that portion. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. That application has been approved. All right, next we'll move to the third location, uh, application Z14043 by Mr. David Bider for Goodwill Industries, 
Um, this is for property in a commercial highway zone at 1114 Mercury Boulevard. Uh, there are three conditions, the three sections of this application. Uh, the first is a special use permit in order to operate a temporary mobile recycling center. The second is an eight-foot variance uh, for the link trailer length. And the third is a 175-foot variance from Section 31C6 of the City of Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance, which states that no receptacle shall be located closer than 300 feet from residentially zoned property. Matthew? Thank you, Vice Chairman Young. Um, this third application from Goodwill is also a repeat application. Um, this trailer has been approved every year since 2010. Um, you see on the uh, aerial photo before you, uh, once again, right next to the word site, is the trailer in question. Uh, and just to the north, north, northwest of the trailer, you see this lot where the cursor is. Um, that is zoned residential, even though it's as frontage on Mercury Boulevard, it is zoned residential. So um, for the past four years, they have made a request for a variance to the minimum 300 foot separation. Uh, from residentially zoned property. Uh, we have not received any complaints um, with regards to the operation of the trailer. Um, even though it is within 300 feet from a residentially zoned piece of property, um, the, the property that the trailer sits on and the residentially zoned property separated by Mercury Boulevard, a four-lane roadway that is you know, quite heavily traveled. So um, I think that kind of uh, mitigates some of the impact of the proximity of the trailer to that residential lot. Uh, but as I mentioned, we have not received any complaints. Um, this particular application um, uh, will require three separate motions. Um, and if the special use permit is approved, staff recommends the same three conditions that uh, uh, were uh, recommended for the previous two applications. Mr. Bider is present, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, any questions for Matthew at this time? Uh, Mr. Bider, anything you'd like to add? Your last chance. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, this time we'll uh, conduct the public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed uh, and open the floor for discussion or a motion. And again, we have three components here. I'll make a motion that we approve the special use permit uh, subject to all staff comments. Second. Have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Or none. That portion has been approved. Uh, next, we'll move to the eight-foot variance. I'll make a motion um, to approve the eight-foot variance subject to any staff comments. Second. Have a motion and a second on that component. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Or none? That portion has been approved next to the 175 foot variance. I'll make a motion that we approve the 175 foot variance uh, subject to any and all staff comments. Second. Have a motion and a second on that component. Any further discussion? Uh, if not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Uh, that application has been approved. So thank you guys there. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to special use permit amendment request. Uh, it's application Z14044. By Mr. Cloud Roundtree, Clyde Roundtree of Huddleston Steel Engineering for Providence Christian Academy. They're requesting to amend a special use permit originally approved on March 27, 2013, for property located at 410 to Jarnet Lane. The original special use permit pertains to the expansion of an existing institutional group assembly use in a residential single family zone. The applicant seeks to amend the special use permit in order to make provisions for a playground on the subject property. Matthew. Thank you, Vice Chairman Young. Um, uh, the application before you, as you mentioned, is an amendment of a special use permit that was approved on March 27, 2013. Uh, many of you who traveled to Jarnet Lane uh, may have noticed that the um, 
uh, expansion to the Providence Christian Academy was recently uh, completed, and uh, it's a uh, Quite an, an impressive expansion, and I know they are excited about the uh, the uh, the uh, work that was just completed. And if I'm not mistaken, school just opened for the 2014-2015 school year uh, last Wednesday. Uh, when city staff was out doing um, inspections on the property, uh, uh, it was observed that the playground that was previously um, towards the front of the site, um, where the where the uh, new addition was was recently completed, was relocated to uh, in very close proximity to the uh, eastern property line adjacent to the Northwood subdivision. Um, and at the time that the uh, application for the expansion to the Board of Zoning Appeals was um, submitted in March 2013, uh, no provisions were made to for the relocate, relocation of that playground, um, and it was not shown anywhere on the plans that that the playground was going to be relocated. And um, especially considering the proximity of the newly relocated playground to uh, single-family residential uses, um, staff indicated to uh, the school that um, this would require a special use permit amendment in order to make provisions for that playground. So um, uh, Providence uh, uh, promptly made application to the Board of Zoning Appeals and has come to you today with two proposed locations. One is the existing location of the playground uh, directly adjacent to that eastern property line, and the, which is their preferred location. They wish to keep it in its, in its current location. And the um, uh, the alternative location would be uh, a little bit further away from that eastern property line, just to the south of the existing parking lot. Now, just to get the board oriented a little bit, uh, you'll see the aerial photograph in front of you. Where the word site is located is the approximate location of the alternative playground location. You'll see the um, athletic field here at the very southern end of the site, and then um, the, where the word site is located is where the alternative location would be. And of course, the, the playground was relocated after this photograph was taken, so you can't see where the playground is located. But if you look right here on the aerial photo, that is where it's actually been located, in between the parking lot and that eastern property line. Now, I do have some photographs as well to show to you. Uh, this is the new addition um, as viewed from the Jarnet Lane. And I'll just kind of take you on a tour of the side of these photographs to get you oriented a little bit. This is the east side of the new addition and the new uh, uh, driveway aisle along the east side of the building, or excuse me, the, um, the west side of the building. That's a, that's a typo on that, um, on that uh, uh, photograph. This is the retention pond and the vegetation on the west side of the subject property. And this is the existing playground location. And this is the existing playground as it relates to the eastern property line. The front of the existing playground. And then you can see this is pointing towards the alternative playground location to the south of the uh, existing parking lot. And this is looking east towards the property line from the alternative playground location, which is a, a little over 100 feet to that eastern property line. Uh, pending resolution of the, um, of the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting and any action that may have to occur after the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting uh, with regards to the playground, uh, Providence has been issued a temporary certificate of occupancy. Um, so as I mentioned, school is already in session and, uh, um, and uh, you know, pending resolution of the um, playground issue and, and several other possible issues, um, the temporary certificate of occupancy would then become a full certificate of occupancy. The, uh, there are specific standards for uh, special use permits for institutional group assembly uses. 
in many, in, in many, with regards to many of these standards, um, they are not applicable since this is just with regards to the playground. However, I will mention that no additional lighting is proposed and no lighting has been installed uh, with the relocation of the playground to its existing location. Uh, no additional parking is warranted um, and uh, the applicants propose to use the, uh, the previously approved buffer for um, uh, screening. Um, one of the things that you'll notice uh, this photograph shows the existing playground as it relates to that eastern property line. Um, with the previous special use permits, there was a type C buffer that was required along that eastern property line uh, in between the Northwood subdivision and uh, the school. Um, the applicants are aware of the fact that, um, that a portion of that playground will need to come out in order to facilitate the um, installation of that type C buffer. So they are aware that that, that playground will need to be, um, uh, that a portion of that will need to be um, uh, removed. And they are making provisions to do so. Uh, you'll also notice that there is a, um, a wooden privacy fence along that property line and there is some existing vegetation on the other side of that fence, uh, but additional uh, plantings will need to be installed in order to uh, meet the requirements of the Type C buffer that was required by the BZA at, at its uh, previous meeting. You'll see that the playground has an existing um, chain link fence as well as out front they have a, uh, uh, I believe it's a, an aluminum, black aluminum fencing. Um, one of the things that you will notice is there is a gate that opens up into um, the parking spaces, kind of creating a situation where um, at least one of those parking spaces is not uh, uh, usable. Um, that would need to be rectified um, if the um, parking lot is approved. Uh, another thing that you'll notice is that there is a, um, uh, a border around the playground holding in the, uh, the mulch and, and any, uh, I don't know if there was any kind of uh, grading or dirt that needed to be added, um, but there is a significant amount of mulch and that's being held in by this and it's almost kind of acting as a retaining wall. Um, so, and we have communicated this to the applicant that if that, regardless of which location is approved, um, if that if either one of them is approved, that a um, grading and drainage plan, um, you know, depicting that uh, it's not having any negative impact on the surrounding properties from a drainage standpoint will need to be submitted. Uh, with that being said, if the board approves this request, staff recommends the following conditions. Uh, a revised site plan must be submitted to the planning department for review. The revised site plan shall include a grading and drainage plan complete with existing and or proposed contours and demonstrating no net impact on adjacent properties. The grading and drainage plan shall be subject to the review and approval of the city engineering department. Number two, if the gate that opens to the parking lot is to remain, then any affected parking spaces should be removed and or modified in order to make this area functional. And number three, the type C landscape buffer, which was required as a part of the previous special use permits along the eastern lot line and along the southern lot line south of the athletic field, must be brought into compliance in conjunction with this construction project. It must be planted no later than January 12, 2015. In addition, no portions of the playground may encroach into the Type C buffer yard, and any portions of the playground already encroaching into the Type C buffer yard must be removed. And that uh, January 12, 2015 date is coincides with the date that their installation bond uh, being held by the Urban Environmental Department expires. So they have um, until then to get that uh, Type C buffer yard uh, installed, and that's why that date was chosen for the condition uh, was because that coincides with that installation bond. With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Mr. Roundtree is in attendance, as is Ms. Lynn Swafford with the school. If you have any questions uh, for them as well. Thank you, Matthew. Any questions for Matthew at this point? I have one. Um, so the reason why this is coming before us now is that this playground was not uh, approved prior with respect to any other submission? That's correct. Okay. But it's there now based upon the pictures. 
So it's not something that they had to tear down in order to make these improvements and then are now wanting to put back. It, it's always been there, correct? It has been. Let, let me show you um, on the aerial photo. And you can see it. I wish I could zoom in here, but this, you know, where the cursor is, is the where the playground used to be. And when they did their expansion, that that kind of displaced that playground. I see. And so, sometime between when their um, special use permit was approved in March of 2013, and now uh, that playground was relocated uh, okay. without approval of the Board of Zoning Appeals. And I believe it was actually relocated some months ago, because um, I think it was in use during the last school year, and, and we just were not aware of that. I understand. Thank you. Sure. All right. Anything further from Matthew? If not, um, Mr. Roundtree or anybody else with the applicant like to, any comments you'd like to add? Uh, one comment I have. If you wouldn't mind coming up to the podium, please. We'll get you on the microphone and TV and all that good stuff. <laughs> I'm rather loud. I'm not used to that. Uh, in regards to the gate that encroaches under the parking lot when open, it was installed as an emergency gate. It is actually not the primary gate used to enter the playground. That gate is located, the primary entrance is located on the north side of the fence on the chain link portion. So um, that's just, a, that is a secondary. We do not mind giving that gate up. Uh, I think I would rather give up the gate rather than a parking space. And in regards to relocating to the alternative location, um, I have no issues with doing that if it is necessary. Uh, our, uh, the downside would be, of course, the expense of it, but also that's our largest plat of property remaining unused, and if we ever need to expand parking, that's the direction we would go with that. So I think that's all I have. Thank you. Hi, my name is Clyde Rounder with Hudson Steel Engineering. I just want to add to Lynn's comments. Um, upon the news that we're going to have to make a change or increase that buffer, I went out just for a site visualization to make sure I understood what the conditions were, and they were in process of moving all that mulch back. So that area has been cleared. The 12 feet that was going to be required for the buffer, they were very proactive in making sure that that was whatever they could do immediately to kind of suffice the needs of the city they did. And so up to this point, I don't believe the landscaping has been completed yet, but, but all that black retaining piece that Matthew's referred to has all been pulled back. All the mulch has been pulled back as well. Thank you. Will the gate also, or the um, fence at, on the back side of the property, will that chain link fence that surrounds the um, playground, playground uh, be enclosed on the back side rather than putting it all the way to the fence? Uh, I, well, right now the fence link is right back all the way to the to the wood fence. Correct. Would that return back and kind of close in from the back side where they just keep the fence back to the fence? Well, the photograph of the well there, there are several things that come into play with that. Uh, the state uh, licensure board regulates that we must enclose the pre-K play area uh, by fence, which a portion of that playground is pre-K and only pre-K is allowed in that area. And then the remaining portion is not fully enclosed. And so if we pull the fence forward the 12 feet, then it's going to require us to move other equipment because of fall zones that the state requires. But isn't that equipment already in the, the Class C buffer zone if, if it's... The, the fence is in the Class C buffer zone right now. Right. And so if the playground is moved outside of that Class C buffer zone, how do you keep the children from entering into that Class C buffer zone? They... they uh, Retaining portion, they're almost, they're like a plastic, uh, probably 18 inch tall, um, like a cross tie function that are pegged together. That would be moved forward and there's, it's 
kind of when the kids get to the edge of the playground, they just know to, they, they stop. Would they be able to climb over those edges? They would be. And, to, and, uh, and enter the buffer zone. Okay. That was my question. So, and we could move the fence forward the 12 feet as well. We, that's not a major issue for us. It would require that we move the swings forward at that point in order to allow the proper uh, fall zone that the state requires. Well, I think that my, my concern is that is not only for the benefit of the neighbors mm -hmm. uh, to not, you know, that the children would be closer to those fences and that, right. would, that noise could carry over to the neighbors, but also for the safety of the children once these trees grow, they wouldn't be easy for teachers to see within that 12 class C buffer zone. So I think it might be easier to contain those children for their own safety with that right. that chain link fence, not only for the benefit of your neighbors. Uh, Pre-K, I'm not sure how, how loud they can get. I'm sure right. that they can get plenty <laughs> loud and carry over a fence of that nature. But, um, but I also wouldn't want them to have any tripping hazards or anything else because that Class C buffer zone is hopefully will grow and Correct. develop some. Right. I understand. And also, if the aerial photo you had that showed the Northwoods subdivision as well with the vegetation, um, if you see, there is a significant landscape buffer between the playground and the actual uh, homes. And we did have the playground in this location all of last school year. Well, I'm sorry. It actually took us from July until the end of September for them to install the playground because of the amount of rock that we're dealing with and having to anchor all the equipment. But um, we have not had any complaints at all from Northwoods regarding the uh, noise level on the playground. Okay. Thank you. Anything further for the applicants? Thank you, guys. Okay, at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against? Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussions. Um, I guess we'll approach this as a motion to approve the existing location. Is that correct, Matthew, how we... Ought to tackle it. Yeah, I think that that the motion, if um, if you are um, so inclined to improve the or to approve the existing location, I think that would probably need to be a part of the a part of the of the of the motion itself. Okay. I, I'll make a comment prior to making a motion, but I don't think there's any need. My, this is my opinion. I don't think there's a need for us to ask them to move this. Uh, playground to this alternate playground location. Uh, I don't think there's enough there for us to warrant that, especially the expense that would be involved. However, I do think I would have never thought of what you brought up. Um, I, the whole purpose in the buffer is to, and even though it only may be 12 or 16 feet, whatever it is, but that's the purpose in the buffer. So I do think that is what motion that I would make is that we need to move the fence uh, in, in accordance with the buffer zone that we're speaking of. And uh, there may be some expense to moving the swing since you've got them anchored down, but uh, it would definitely be much less than having to move the whole uh, playground. But I, I think Ms. King's point is warranted. So with that, I will make a motion that we approve the existing playground location uh, subject to all staff comments, including the installation of the buffer prior, prior to the date that Matthew outlined, and also that the fence that is around the current fence that is uh, butting up to uh, the Northwood subdivision, that it be moved uh, in accordance with the uh, the buffer uh, in question. And you look like you got something else to add. So <laughs> <please do. laughs> you, 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 you recognize the look, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, I was just curious if uh, if the board was, um, you know, with the information that Ms. Swafford presented about the uh, that gate up front being an emergency gate, if uh, if the board uh, had any thoughts about that condition number two about the gate in the parking space, or if if the board wanted to leave that condition as is. 
That sounded like a, a one or the other, either the gate there or the parking place, but not both. That's the way I understood it. Well, if it's if it's an emergency access or an emergency gate only, it may not be as as much of a concern. I don't know how how you would just limit the ingress and egress out of that gate to emergencies only, uh, unless it were, you know, somehow, you know, if people were only able to use it in emergencies, I'm not sure how that would happen. Uh, but in light of what Ms. Wofford said, uh, I didn't know if the board had any thoughts on on that recommended condition because that's that's new information to me. I understood Ms. Swafford's wish that you'd rather have the parking place than the gate. I guess staff can tell us whether you know leaving it open to their word as to whether they're only going to use it in emergencies, whether that's sufficient. If I could ask Ms. Swafford a question, um, you may want to come back up to the microphone. Mm. In a in a in the event of an emergency, is the space uh, exiting the normal exit enough for teachers to corral their children and, and, and leave the building? Or would that emergency, as an emergency gate, be necessary if there was like a freak fire on the mulch? The um, only time that I can see that the emergency gate would be necessary if is if there was a freak fire outside the gate on the north okay. entrance that they normally use to enter the playground. The um, gate that we're calling the emergency gate actually is on a, is that a five foot or a six foot fence, Matthew? Oh, the aluminum fence. I'd say, I'd say either four or five. Okay. It, the access gate has a magnetized lock on the top of the gate so it requires an adult it's difficult to open and to, close. to open it a, a child would not be able to open it and the magnetic lock is located on the exterior of the gate so an adult would have to reach over lift and open so it's not there's not uh, a chance of a child the pre-k children which are the only ones that play in that area being able to do that it would require an adult. And to answer your question, the only time I can see that they would not be able to be corralled out that one gate on the north side is if there was a fire or something occurring on, on the that. other side. But if there was an event within the playground, you think that everything would be able? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, for safety, I just was concerned that if we took the gate away, that there may be for some reason a need to have the ability to have to act. just like in the movie theater or here where we Correct. we have an emergency we we can leave more efficiently with more doors okay. Did I answer thank you fully? yes thank okay. you thank you miss Wofford have we made clear got the points cleared up for staff and the motion that, that you guys need so w w would it be the board's desire to to leave that condition in or to allow them to keep that that get that emergency I, I, uh, this is again uh, I don't know that it's part of my motion because I, I, I want somebody else to talk besides just me but or get your opinion um, I, I'm okay I think in I think if there was an emergency you would uh, be glad that there's a second gate okay I think we can take them at their word that they're only going to use it in the case of emergency so that they don't lose. It's not an either or or. It's, okay, we're going to take them at their word, and if something does happen, we're going to be glad we had the gate. I so, agree, Mr. Mm -hmm. that yeah. I agree with that. Well, I hate to take something out that may be beneficial. Right. So, as long so, as it's not a... So well, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. As long as we're not approving something that's against codes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, all right, so, um, oh, and I'll just, I'll be quiet. I don't want Well, and I think that with the, with, with the difficulty of access, with it being an extra step to open that door, that there, I, I think that there's less risk that it would be used as a regular door. Whereas I'm assuming, of course, this may be another question, that the regular chain link fence gate is like any other regular chain link fence gate. And that, and that would be something that is, that I would be more likely to use if I was going to go in and out of that playground. So, just so I make sure we get the conditions right, we'll strike condition two? Okay. Right. Correct. 
and then we would add a condition that the uh, that the chain link fence be moved outside of the required Type C buffer to enclose around the back, or to, to put some additional fencing in to enclose um, prior to encroaching into that into that Type C buffer. Correct. That was yes. Looking to protect the Type C buffer. Right. Matthew's furiously writing down our, our motion. Uh, okay, so we've got a motion in place. Uh, do we have a second to that motion? I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? There are not. So that application has been approved subject to the slight modifications there. Appreciate you guys coming in. Next item. Uh, staff reports and other business. I believe I have none today. Have none. Okay. Yeah. With that, we will stand adjourned. <laughs>